Hello, welcome back to Code Station 33 and Introduction to Programming. Today, we are going to start looking at counting in a computer. Computers, one of their powers is their ability to solve problems iteratively. That means over and over and over again. And one of the ways we have of doing that is with something called a for loop. Now, a for loop allows you to do a particular set of tasks a specific number of times. And the basic structure for a for loop is we set the starting value after this little command called for. So let's say we want to start at 1. And then we test the ending value. So we want to see if we have reached where we want to stop. So let's say 10. And then we just increase a counter so that we, we keep track of. So we would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And if it was equal to 10, then we would set it to be equal to and stop. Each time we go through that counting process, we're going to execute these statements. So really, this, the loop starts at this line, does these statements, then goes back up to the top, starts with the for loop again, and with the incremented value, testing the condition, does these statements again, test the value, increase the counter, do the statements again, over and over and over again, until we have reached the end of the number of times we were planning on executing it. One of the things we have to pay attention to in a for loop for the Arduino structure is it uses something called a unary operator, which means instead of just saying uh, take the value i and add 1 to it and put the answer back into i, we write all of that out in a very short way with just i++. So really that means i is assigned the value of i plus 1. So in other words, i is incremented by one value. The reason why that's important is now we can put that inside the for loop without having to add an equal sign, in other words, a separate statement inside the for loop. This is what a for loop looks like inside of our Arduino programming. We start with the command for, F-O-R, and then we put parentheses. And inside the parentheses, there are going to be three components. First, the initialization of a variable and its declaration, int i equals zero. Now, i lives only within this for loop. The scope is within that for loop. So if I use an i somewhere else, it's not going to affect this i. We want that to happen. That is why we're declaring it right here inside the for loop. We could theoretically declare it outside the for loop and just initialize it inside the for loop, but that's a very special case and we don't do that very often. The next part of the for loop is i is less than 100. In this part of the for loop, we're checking to see if the value of i is smaller than 100, not equal to 100. So in this case, we're going to go 0 all the way up to 99. And once we get to 99 and go to 100, 100 is not less than 100. It's equal to 100. So that's going to stop the loop. So this loop will proceed and print hello for all the values 0 through and including 99 which turns out to be 100 different values if you think about it. Counting 0 all the way up to 199, all the way up to 99 is 100 different values. The i++ is our unary operator, and it increments our value. It looks like I'm missing a semicolon here. There should be a semicolon right here at the end of the plus plus. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. And then we're going to have a serial print just to say hello on the screen. There we go, so I have my semicolon fixed. Here's a second example. In this example, and again, I'm missing the semicolon, so I'll have to fix that. We want to count down rather than up. So we're going to initialize our i to a 100. That's the value we're going to start at. And we're going to check to see in our condition if i is greater than 0. And starting at 100, of course, i is greater than 0. And instead of adding 1 each time with an i++, plus plus, this time we're going to subtract 1. And there you go. You can see I have fixed my semicolon. So our i minus minus decreases 1 every time. So we're going to start at 100. 
and then it's going to print zero hello because 100 is greater than zero and then 99 98 97 each time subtracting one all the way down till we get to one one is still greater than zero so it will print a hello for one then it will subtract one and zero is not greater than zero so we're going to do this for all the values 100 all the way down to one which if you think about it is 99 different values so we have to be careful when we're counting our for loops to make sure we know exactly how many times our loop is running and making sure that especially when we're talking about zero that whether we're including the zero or not including the zero so let's go to look at tinkercad and see an example of this inside of tinkercad because it's important that we see this actually working so here's the little code i built uh, it's just a simple LED connected through a resistor, grounded to our grounding bar, and we can see the grounding bar is grounded to ground. I have this on pin three. And one thing I wanted to say today, because I haven't mentioned it yet, is our resistor. I have noticed that sometimes people put resistors and don't really pay attention to the numbers, so their light doesn't get as bright as it should. We need to make sure that our resistor is set to just ohms, not kilo ohms. And let me show you the difference. When I start this at 50 kilo ohms, you can see it's really, really dim. It's not very bright at all. If I switch this down to ohms, now it's much brighter. So 50 ohms, actually, ideally, it should be 86 because 50 is a little bit too low. 86 ohms is perfect for these LEDs and gives us just the right amount of voltage for our LED. Well, maybe just a touch high. Maybe we'll make it 87. There we go. The reason why I knew it was causing a problem so it was getting that explanation mark. So you'll notice if we look at our LED, it is now getting brighter and dimmer in kind of a pulsing action. We're using a for loop to do that. So let's take a look and see if we can figure out exactly what is going on. So we set up our LED pin three to match our circuit. I created a variable called ramp time. Now this is in milliseconds. This is going to be the amount of delay that happens as the light gets brighter and brighter and then gets dimmer and dimmer. In my setup, I make sure I set up my pin mode for my LED pin to output and turn on my serial port because I'm gonna print something to the screen for us to keep track of what's going on here. In my first loop, I'm going to go from 0 to 256. That is 255 different values. Excuse me, that is 256 different values, 0 through 255. So 256 different values. Oh, actually, it works without the semicolon. Let me try that with the semicolon. Oh, no. It does not work with the semicolon. That's, that's a mistake. I'm sorry. I got my languages confused. In Java, you need a semicolon. In this language, we do not. Sorry, I apologize for that. So no semicolon there. Uh, we're going to write the value of each of the values in the for loop, 0 through 255, to our pin. So 0 is going to be really, really dim. And up to 255, which will be as bright as it can be. Remember, we're using analog write. And analog write can only take the values between 0 and 255. Whereas analog read could read the values between 0 and 1023. So there's a bit of a difference there when we're using with our analog write with our analog read, and it's important to remember. Then we're going to delay before we go to the next. So it's going to delay a little bit so we can actually see the change. If we make it go too fast, then it's really hard to see the change. Then I'm also going to print out the value in the serial monitor. So if we look, we can see the numbers are going up and then going back down. And it just keeps going and going like that. The reason why it keeps going and going like that is because we are in the void loop, which is going to run this for loop over and over again. So the first for loop brings things up to the maximum brightness. The second for loop counts down to zero. So again, we're starting at 255 this time, and we are going to decrease by one using I minus minus until we get to a value that is greater than zero. And then once we get to equal to zero, that stops the loop and we go way back up to the void loop and start the process again. So we can see in our serial monitor, 
and I can pull my LED over so we can see that at the same time. There's our LED. And we can track our values. You see how it's getting dimmer and then getting brighter each time and it looks like it is pulsing. And if you want to slow it down, then just go ahead and change our global ramp time. So right now it's 10 milliseconds. We can make it faster or slower just by changing this number to it more numbers uh, milliseconds or less milliseconds. But remember, there's really 256 values. So you don't want to make it too big. If you make it like a thousand, that's going to be 256 seconds on the way up and 256 seconds on the way down. So it's going to take a really long time. So that is all for our for loops. Close that screen. I'll see you next time.